Hi all, we are here today with Sunburn. Every single member is on this chat. If you want to introduce all yourselves, tell us who you are. I'll start. I'm Zach. I'm the singer, songwriter, and I play a bit of guitar as well. Yeah, I am Marish. I'm the bass player. Also write a little bit too. I'm Connor, and I'm the lead guitarist for the band. I'm Rob, and I'm the drummer. Awesome. So, how are you all? What have you been? Have you been keeping busy with all this uh, isolation stuff, being stuck at home? What have you been doing to try and keep yourselves occupied? Not much for me. I've just kind of been chilling, just writing a few songs, uh, just kind of doing nothing. Merch has been really, been really hitting it hard. I think we've had a yeah, we've had great fun. So uh, Connor's dad owns a chicken factory. So uh, during the lockdown, um, we decided to go work in there. So now my job. Five days a week is to prepare chicken Kievs. So that's what I've been up to. <laughs> Fair enough. I've just been smoking cigarettes and drinking Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> Liv, how's, how you mean to continue, of course. That's it. I'm, I'm playing drums, I guess, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Connor? You've been up too much? Oh, yeah, sorry. Oh, well, I've been pretty much the same as Marish. I'm working up in factory preparing Kievs 24-7. So, yeah, it's great. Awesome. Do you think you guys are going to write a song about chicken Kievs by the end of this? <laughs> we'll have to see, see about that one now, to be honest. Yeah, we're getting a, we're getting a great grounding in Romanian techno. So we're working with a lot of Romanians, and uh, they seem to be big into their techno, so we're getting a good ear for that sort of stuff. So who knows? Could be appearing in our stuff sometimes. <laughs> We noticed that uh, one way you guys have been keeping busy is by making lockdown playlists. So if you could each recommend us a track from your playlist to go listen to, that'd be awesome. Ooh. I'm going to have to recommend Jolene by Ray LaMontagne because I haven't stopped listening to it for like two weeks. There. That's a good share. Um, I got to say, I think it was on last week's one, or maybe this one. Uh, and I love the war and drugs. They have a tune called "The Strangest Thing," and I think that that's something someone, everyone should really try to listen to. It's a great song. I'm starting to get into um, Krill's most recent album there, um, "Energy Fleets." The track I've been spinning a lot. The yeah, Maze is kind of a band that I've just discovered in the last couple of weeks, and "Silver" by them is literally just the tune I've had on repeat. Like it's just. I think it's unreal. Awesome. So throwing back to a time where you could just walk into Tesco's and just get a cheeky snack, what would your ideal meal deals be? Oh. Zach, oh, you're going to have to take this one first. You're going to have to take this one first. It's made for me. <laughs> <laughs> I have about two Tesco meals a day. Uh, was it? Chicken tikka, wrap, Lucas sure. eggs, and the green Pringles, sour cream Pringles. Solid. Solid meal deal. I'm gonna go with the uh, what's that falafel sandwich they do in the flatbread? I think so good. <laughs> Whatever it is, it, they, I think it's got falafels in it. And uh, yeah, I'm 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 a, I'm a coke guy. I'm just potato crisps because potatoes are the best. Yeah, best don't have potato. I guess <laughs> you're you're missing out. Yeah, not saying that we have access to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm definitely just a just a ham and cheese guy. <laughs> and, a and, a, and a pack of potato because I'm from the country. You know, Simple it's man, it's just a ham and cheese guy. I have, I have serious complaints. Every time you go somewhere that's got like a prepared lunch, there's never any ham and cheese. <laughs> Rip me open. Uh, I'd say classic BLT. Can't go wrong with that. <laughs> just put it into my mouth and feed. But I don't really care. That's awesome. All right, you guys formed at the end of last year, so in a relatively short time you've had as a band, what have been your biggest highlights? I feel like everything's kind of been a highlight. We've just been taking it like one thing at a time. Uh, just we, we kind of just did a gig in each corner of Ireland and then we had, we had big plans to keep going, but obviously we're in lockdown now and then just got our tune out. So we've just been trying to get as much promo on it as we can because we just sat at home. Yeah, for me, I think Cork was a big one. Um, because I'm from Cork originally, I only, I only moved to Dublin last September, so it was a real sort of homecoming gig. Um, we packed the place out and all my mates were there, so that was a big one for me. Uh, personally, I suppose it's not really a moment like where we've played with fans around, but I think it's been important because it's been such a short amount of time 
didn't know each other beforehand. But um, in rehearsal spaces, you know, it originally came out where we had a song that Zach written or whatever. But the more we've gotten to play together, there's been kind of nearly landmark rehearsals we've had where we've bonded and developed the music more internally with ourselves. Like there's this one tune, it's kind of instrumental, but it was real kind of solidifying moment for our own playing, which I think is important. It was really helpful. Awesome. It sounds like the mur- it sounds like the murder capital, and I can't wait to play it live. Um, be- yeah, Windmill Lane was huge for me. I got to use a we recorded drums and vocals for the single in Windmill Lane in Dublin. And uh, I got to use a really nice drum kit, and it was just really cool, like doing stuff with the lads and just putting a shift in. That was a, that was a big, big one for me. It was a good we, we, we did, did it for free as well, which is great. Thanks, Donica. We managed to do a rope and free recording session through one of my mates. He's a student at Windmill Lane um, in Pulse College, is the name of it. He's doing music production there. So we kind of had to sneak in. Um, I don't think it was on the books or anything, but uh, we got what we needed to do done. So that was that. That's cool. It's cool. All right, we're going to play a game with you guys now. Um, it's called Homegrown. Effectively, I'll give you an invention and you have to tell me if it's from Dublin or not. All right? <laughs> Who do you think is going to be best at this game? I'm the only one actually from Dublin, Dublin here. Well, then I'm, we'll see. A, I'm, a, I'm, I'm from Plastic Dublin. <laughs> plastic Dublin. It's like half an hour outside. All right, all right. We'll start, we'll start with one. Um, the Cream Cracker. Jacob, Jacob. Yeah, I, I got, I'm going yesterday. I'm going to so say no, just in case I get it right by myself. Okay, well, the cream cracker was actually invented in Dublin, um, and it was manufactured by William Jacob in a bakery in Dublin. Yeah. All right, your next one is the toaster. Uh, no, I can't be. Irish, Irish people aren't that smart. Like. Irish people that aren't that big into toast. Yeah, I, my, my, man, my man told me the other day she was toasting bread on an open fire up until 1999. <laughs> 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 right, you guys would be, you'd be right, the toaster was actually invented in Scotland. Uh, like I called Alan McMaster's in 1893. Right, um, the tin can. Yes. It was invented around war times, I know that. I think we invented it solely to hold Guinness. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go, yes. Yeah. Okay. Any of our answers are you? I'm going to say yes as well. Going with like, yes? Like that. Uh, it's actually English. Uh, <gasps> it was invented by a guy called Peter Durand. All right, your next one is Pseudocrim. That's yes, that's, yes, that's, that's absolutely, that's made in Balbriggan, that is 100%, yes. Yes, yeah, you, your, your certainty is completely right. Yeah. Thomas Smith, a pharmacist, made it. All right, last one. Um, flavoured crisps. Yes, Tato. You reckon? Yeah, Tato, absolutely. Tato not from Dublin, though. That's a me. Rob, you should go on the chase. I'm, conv- <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm convinced it's Dublin. Okay. Are we going with yes then? I'm thinking of, I'm thinking of t- Tato Park, not the actual okay, we'll go, we'll go with it. We'll go with yeah, yes. it, it was made from Dublin. Um, I will give you a bonus point if you can come up with the first flavour that was made. Cheese and onion. Wow. <laughs> Rob, you're ridiculously good at this. Uh, yeah, it was cheese and onion. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. You guys did, I think you got a solid four there out of five. It's not bad. I was a national table quiz champion two years in a row when I was 11, so. (laughs) Flex in here. Brilliant. Yeah, nice one. I thought you did surprisingly well. I didn't know any of these things were invented anywhere, so it's fine. So your first single came out in March called uh, Jump the Gun. What inspired uh, to write it and to eventually uh, record it? I wrote it about two years ago just being sad about girls, pretty much. It's kind of where all my inspiration for my songs comes from. But uh, yeah, it just kind of just kind of came up with the hook. I remember I was just walking home from my friend's house. I was just singing to myself, just like, ah. And like, yeah, it just kind of happened. And then Merce threw the verse on. And we like, when we first like formed, we just knew that was going to be our first song. Like we knew that was what we'd build off. Um, yeah, it was a pretty instant sort of a thing. Um, we knew that 
it just struck us. There was this real gut feeling about it and we're glad that it's done as well as it has because our gut feelings must have been somewhat right. <laughs> Yeah, because surely, because you do, because obviously you do a lot, do touring. You went all you went around sort of the corners of Ireland. You you ended up um, choosing that one. So, you do you have a massive back catalogue of songs that you're you're looking at and thinking about releasing, or is it just you saw that one and you're like, this is a tune, let's get it out. Yeah, we knew we needed to get that one out, but we also have a good few tunes just ready to go. So we're just kind of waiting at the moment till till we can get back in the studio. Like we have we have our big plan laid out That's cool. it's gonna be it's gonna be great i can't wait the second single is gonna be a, a big thing for us to um really kind of find a sound do you have any idea of when your second single is going to come out or is it just lockdown screwed up uh, I, don't, I think we were hoping we were probably hoping to get it out kind of around june like without lockdown i'd say like record it in april maybe but uh yeah we're hoping to get in the studio maybe July, if like as early as possible. All right. I do a show on our radio station called Salty Subject, which is where we talk about pet hates. What are each of your pet hates? If you had one. Um, people who don't drive on the left lane in motorways, that's a big thing for me. <laughs> uh, like I do, I do auto drive and it just really, really, really rubs me the wrong way when you're 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 trying to overtake and it's just it's a whole like people should learn to drive properly i would say um, don't hog the middle lane yeah yeah exactly i'm trying to think i can't yeah i'm pretty easy i, say, I don't have many pets people that eat with their mouth open loud ears yeah that's the bottom <laughs> you're ready to murder them at that stage like you know yeah um, I hate chicken Kievs now. <laughs> <laughs> it's as simple as that. Yeah, I can't can't look at them. Can't can't smell them. The Phobia of chicken Kievs. It's it's a pet <laughs> hate. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's for it's a a name for it. Just Kievophobia or something like that. Kievophobia. <laughs> so I've seen from your Insta stories, you you and your road trips. When you're in the car, who who's in charge of the orcs? That's me. That's that's Mirish. I do the driving. Mirish is on the ox. That's it. Mirish just gets the ox because he has long legs, so he gets to sit in the front. <laughs> we have like, Rob's oh. Rob's car is quite small, and uh, when travelling, leg space is restricted. So due to my slightly tallerness, um, I get the front seat, and thus and therefore the ox too, which is nice. You get rarely my own tunes though, because uh, we're usually under Rob's dictatorship when it comes to tunes but that's okay yeah. he's a great it's it's, it's 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 almost as if i i just like to tell mirish what to play and like he's the one physically doing it but i mean my car my radio my rules <laughs> okay. that's how it should be to be fair yeah no I, but, but. in return for free lifts <laughs> yeah that's true actually i mean cars don't run on friendship let's be honest <laughs> I, I don't pay for my petrol either so it's great <laughs> Okay, so my, my, my favourite question to ask in any interview ever. Which would you rather own? The DeLorean from Back to the Future or the TARDIS from Doctor Who? TARDIS. Definitely. DeLorean. <laughs> it's gotta, yeah, it's got to be the DeLorean. I, can't. I don't think I've seen Back to the Future. I like the idea of a phone box. I just do. I think that, that this might genuinely spark a big, a big feud for a, quite a long time. <laughs> could talk about this one for hours and hours on end. I just can't believe I started, started a band ago, didn't I? <laughs> for Back to the Future. <laughs> I know the feeling. I've let the boys down. <laughs> it's like that bit in How I Met Your Mother when Ted gets engaged that realizes she hasn't watched Star Wars. <laughs> what a reference. Hard show, hard show. <laughs> cool. I think. Yeah. Do you have anything you want to promote on this interview whilst we're here? That's kind of all we all we have at the moment. <laughs> yeah. <I'm> <laughs> um, Instagram at a band called Sunburn is where you can find us. We've got a few little videos there from all of our trips and a few clips from stuff that we shall be releasing in the future. So at a band called Sunburn, you find us there. Awesome. And so us. Us on Facebook, Twitter, all that good stuff. Yeah. 
we will be linking your instagram socials twitters on the interview when we post it so that'll be good um thank you so much for letting us interview you it's been fun thank Um, you so much thank you so much